Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create online video lessons using videos you've made or any video that you find on YouTube. Let's go ahead and get started here. I'm at edpuzzle.com and I'm going to go and sign up for a new account as a teacher. I'm going to use my Google account. And now I'm in, right? So here I have a tab in the upper right-hand corner for my classes. Now in my classes, I want to add a new class and I'm going to import from my Google Classroom. You don't have to use Google Classroom. You can manually create a class as well. I'll show you how to do that next. But first I'm going to do my Google Classroom import, use my same account, give it permission, and I'm going to now import Mr. Burns' demo class, and let's import those. Now we'll see here, I don't have any assignments yet, and I'm, so obviously I don't have any due dates, and my students, you can see there are my two students that I've imported into this class. Now in the upper right hand corner, we have class options. If I need to rename the class, because this one just came in with the classroom name from Google Classroom, if I want to change it, I can do that. I can add description and say, you know, just a sample class. We'll save that and close it out. All right, so now let's go back to my kind of home page here. And you can see all kinds of videos here that are available to me. There's some popular channels. You know, I can go down and look at crash course videos or National Geographic videos. You can also just click on that Ed Puzzle tab, and that'll take me to this big mix of all kinds of content areas. Now, if I want to do a search in here, I can filter it down by subject. You want to do computers. And so now I have things that are listed in the computers category, and maybe I'll do something about FTP. So there's a video explaining FTP for dummies. Right? Uh, or I could pick one of these other ones, FTP tutorial. Now, you can also go back and clear that filter out. But I want to use a video that I've already found on YouTube and perhaps I've bookmarked it in Google Keep or I've bookmarked it wherever I like to bookmark things and I want to use that one. So that's what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at how to use a video you've already found outside of Edpuzzle. So let's say I want to use this video that I found on YouTube and I want to put it into Edpuzzle. In the upper corner here, upper left corner, just paste in that link and do a search. And now it's pulled up my video for me. So right there, I can see the video. I can cut it down if I want to. Maybe I don't need to use the beginning part of it. And I'm going to mute that. But maybe I want to cut it down. So I'll just click and drag and cut that down. And I click and drag and use that piece too. So now I've shrunk the length of that video down. Now, let's hit that finish button. And I want to go in and I want to now add some questions to this video lesson. So let's go down here and hit edit. And I want to add in some questions. So that brings up this new little panel. And as I'm playing the video back, more about that in a minute, but I want to run down some notable names. So we see the video is playing back here. Field I, again, I have it muted for the sake Good of this demonstration, but it's muted. Freely available to schools and videos, I want to say, I'm going to add in a question right now at the 15 grade. second mark. So right there, I've paused it. Let's add in a multiple choice question. And I'm going to say, in this part of the video, the speaker 
is introducing what topic? Let me rephrase that question. What topic is the speaker introducing? And we can say you know, he's talking about And we'll add another question or answer choice, I should say. And now let's save it. So I've now save that question. And let's continue and add some more questions along the way. So let's go back into playing these. Assembling a great. And I can fast forward. If I know exactly where I want to go, maybe I'll jump ahead in the video to the two minute. System, old story management platform, three minute system. mark. And again, maybe I'll add another multiple choice question. So you can see that I've added in a couple answer choices. Some of the things you can do with your answer choices besides just using text, you'll see you can also add in an image as an answer choice. So I can upload that image or link to an image. I can also include a link in here. And you'll notice I can also add in answer feedback. I can type in my feedback here and say, that's not quite right. You should always try to look at the camera. And we'll save that. So now I've added a couple uh, of questions here. Let's add in one more thing. Dot com is hosting. Let's go down webinars. and fast forward a little bit further. Share. And let's add in a note here. And our notes we can add in in two different ways. First, we can write in just a quick clarifying note or use that image option to perhaps upload a diagram or an illustration of a point. So I've added my note that way, or I can record my own note. Just click on that microphone, and now I'm recording my note, and I can say, hey kids, make sure you pay attention to this part, because it's a very important point, and it might not appear on your next quiz, but it will probably appear at the end of the unit quiz. So now I've added those notes in. So I've added in that written note plus video. my voice note for my students. Let's hit continue video and video. away we go. And we can see here every one of these little questions or notes that I've added has appeared on the timeline. And over here on the left hand side, I can see exactly what I've written already. Now, one last thing I can do with Edpuzzle that I personally don't use, but I do know some people who have used that is a voiceover component to record your commentary over the video. Now, bear in mind, this will replace the audio that's built into the video. So unless you're prepared to narrate the entire video, I wouldn't necessarily use that feature. Let's go ahead and finish that. And now I want to assign it to my class. So we have this button in the bottom right corner. Let's hit assign. I'm going to assign it to my class. You can see that's my Google Classroom class. I'm going to turn on closed captioning. I'm going to post it on the Google Classroom. I'm going to make it available to start right now. And it's currently 
10 a.m. It's a little past 10 a.m. here while I'm making this video. So I'm going to make it available at 10.05 a.m. Save. And set our due date here. Maybe I'd make it due by uh, Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. So my students have a few days to finish it. So let's assign it now. So here I am in my teacher account. This is listed under my classes. I can see that neither one of my students have watched any of it. So they don't have a grade and it's not been turned in. So now let's go and take a look at the student perspective on Edpuzzle and how a student will find the things that are assigned to them and respond to those things that are assigned to them. All right, so here is the student perspective on using Edpuzzle via Google Classroom. So my student here has signed into his Google Classroom and he's going to see that Richard Byrne has posted a new assignment via Edpuzzle. He can click on that and see this assignment. Now, we wanna make sure our student doesn't mark this as done before they've actually done it. So the student's going to sign in with their Google account. And they'll be taken right into this lesson. Now, the student can hit the play button down at the bottom of the screen. More about that in a minute. But and I they'll want to run down some notable lesson names right here. Now, they're going to see they have a couple of questions to do. Uh, they can't click on these quite yet. Freely available to school and you'll students. see that student Including just tried to fast forward and it was locked. So now they can't advance until they answer this question. Hit submit, they see their score and continue on. Now again, if they try to fast forward, they get that locked message on the lesson. So they can't fast forward, they can't just skip from question to question in here. Microsoft Education has been so again, the student is now stuck on this question until they answer it. Now they can go back and rewatch if they need a little help or a little reminder, or they can answer it. Uh, and they see there, we've got our instant feedback. That's not quite right. You should always try to look at the camera. Now they can rewatch it or they can continue from there. Now let's say a student exits out of this. And we'll go back to my teacher account. And here in my teacher account, I can now see that Mason last watched it two minutes ago. He has watched 10% of the video and he's answered half of the questions correctly. Now, when I'm done with this, if I want to, I can export my grades, I can download my grades, I can delete the assignment, or I could reset student progress if I think my students are you know, needing to take another shot at this. I might reset that student progress there. Now, I mentioned there are other ways to create classes here. Let me go back to my classes. If I want to add a new class without using Google Classroom, I can do that. Let's go to add new class, and we're going to going to create a new class here from scratch. Now, we can do this as a classic, okay, where you're going to have videos in every lesson or open, which is great if you see here, as an elementary school teacher, you want to have an easy way for your students to get into this without having to use an email address or remember a username and password. Or if you just want to share this with your colleagues and do a quick demo with your colleagues of how it works, you can do that option. I'm going to use the classic option. Let's create my class here. And again, to invite my students in the upper right corner, I'll hit invite students. I can email my students this link, or I can have them go to edpuzzle 
com and enter the class code when they sign up as students. And they can sign up using any email address that they want as long as they have that class code. So that's the other option you can use for creating classes. Now there's one more option for making your video lessons. Let's say you've recorded your own videos and you don't have them on YouTube yet. You can still use your own content. So here in my content, I'm going to select, so I went over here to my content and I'm going to add content and I can upload a video. So now I can choose a file from my desktop and I can upload my own video. So perhaps I want to use this quick video that I made. I'll upload it and then I can go through and add questions to it just like I was able to do with any other video that I have found online and imported by using that link option. So when that uploads, we'll take a look at how I can use the video that I've uploaded. All right, so now that my video is uploaded, let's just take a look at what we can do with it. Again, we can go in and we can hit the edit button in the bottom right corner. Let's edit that. We can crop it, cut down the length of it, add a voiceover, or start adding our questions and notes into our assignment. Or if I just want my students to watch this video, and perhaps write something about it at the end, I might just go hit the finish button and then assign it to one of my classes. And there it is. So that's an overview of how you can create video lessons using videos you find online or videos that you've made yourself and how to share them with your students. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to send me an email, richard at burn.media. And for more tips and tricks and tutorials like this, please check out practicaledtech.com or subscribe to my YouTube.